What's up, guys? Welcome to the Stat Street Sports Channel. Let's get right into it. Immediate game reaction to this wonderful electric game. Eagles versus Saints. Must watch TV. Definitely game of the week for the one o'clock block of, of the matchups. And it was a barn burner, man. You know, and as a Atlanta Falcon fan, we played the Eagles last week, somehow beat them. And then we you know, obviously we had we had the Saints twice uh this season and every season we're in the same same division. It's gonna be tough. It is gonna be tough beating both these teams or we beat the Eagles, but beating the Saints twice. Um, you know, this was a very physical matchup. No love lost. You've seen between Jalen Carter and some of those guys on that Saints team. Both uh defensive lines were very well, both these defenses in general was very physical. Uh, both teams play a little bit sloppy. Both running backs, Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, were phenomenal, both in the air, both in the run. They really showed their value as two of the top five backs in the NFL. You know, and the funny thing is, before I get into the game, you know, I did videos on both of these two guys the last couple years saying that the Saints should, trade, should move on from Kamara. And I said as well that I don't think Barkley was a great fit for the Eagles, and I was dead wrong on, on both of those things. I thought Barkley was washed up. I was saying I wouldn't pay him past $10 million. He's worth every dime, every penny that the, the Eagles paid for him. He is back to prime form from three, four years ago. He's behind a great offensive line. He has great weapons, uh, and he's look, he looks phenomenal. He looks fast. Uh, now going to Alvin Kamara, you know, I said just this, this, this summer, this, this spring, that the Saints will move on from him. I thought they would be trash, you know, and there's no, no bias as an NFC South competitor to the Saints, but I didn't think they would be a very good team. You know, I didn't trust Derek Carr, and I still don't in the long term, but to say so far that this season, through through, through three games, they have looked like one of the teams to beat in the NFL is an understatement. They look very good. Defense flies around. They make sacks. They make plays on the front end and, and on the back end, and Carr played well. You know, and now we're getting to the game now. Carr played fairly well, 14 for 25, 142, one touchdown, one pick, one sack. It's tough. It's tough, man, when Jalen Carr and that defense is playing so physical, playing so strong, and they're up in your face almost every play. It's just tough to really make something happen. So the numbers don't show it, but Carr played fairly well. As I said, Alvin Kamara uh, rushing 26 carries, 87 yards. In the air, three for 40. He played well. Chris Olave with a late game touchdown, which was the almost was the game winner before the Eagles came away and won the game. Um, I would love to see Rashid Shaheed, who had a great first two uh, games and first two weeks of the season, kind of, you know, um, play better. Well, not play better, but the, he tried to get the ball to him. Carr did, but they just played great coverage. Quinion Mitchell and Slay on the outside corner spots are, are awesome. With Max playing at the slot spot, you know that's a hard team to beat, and they definitely played well. Uh, and back going and going back to the top of the video, I should have said this earlier. Dallas Goddard for the Eagles, phenomenal day. This was a Dallas Goddard day, plus a, a Saquon Barkley day when their quarterback didn't really have it. Uh, Hurts, and, and we gotta have discussion about Hurts. You know, sometime soon he played okay today. The mistakes are kind of just you know a little too consistent. A lot of fumbles, a lot of picks the last couple years, and you know. He definitely hasn't progressed since a couple years ago when we all thought, you know, he was the MVP and the Eagles were the best team in the league when they played the Chiefs, what, uh, two, three years ago now in the Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, we'll have a discussion about that later. But Saquon saved the day, 17 from 147, two touchdowns. But Dallas Goddard, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, 10 catches, 170 yards, and he was phenomenal. 11 targets, 10 catches, only missed one ball. Him and Hurst were in sync tonight, and he was unstoppable. You know, and every third down, even though the Eagles didn't convert every fourth down, but every third down, every time they needed a, a big play, Saquon or Goddard was there. And um, you know, he 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 is a mismatch not a mismatch uh, a nightmare for some of these safeties to guard. Most safeties to to try to guard big boy six four six five got some good weight on him, and you know. Tyron made plays, other guys made plays, but when it came down to it, Goddard was unstoppable, and also Saquon and their O line was unstoppable, man. So, great game, great win by the Eagles. Gutty win, you know, because I said early on, Hurts making fumbles and picks, and he's just not really reading the field well. And for, for my liking, as I said, he was due to be 
probably a top five quarterback a couple years ago, and now you know he's still stuck in that top ten, top twelve range where he should be probably in the top five. Uh, I, I think when, when he at his best, he's probably better than Lamar Jackson, but just hasn't really panned out yet. But you know, here's the spurts where he plays well, but also spurts where he plays kind of you know uh, down in my opinion. But overall, man, as I said, these two teams were very physical. Uh, the Eagles finished the game with just one sack on Derek Carr. That one sack came from Jordan Davis, who was great all day as well. Him and Jalen Carter were very tough to stop for that Saints offensive line, who, you know, coming to the season, we all know the Saints would have some O-line problems. They held up fairly well, as, as best as, as, as you could versus the Eagles team. But, uh, you know, a lot of pressures, but only allowed one sack, so that's not bad. Then going to the Saints defense, they had four sacks. They peppered uh, Jalen Hurts with pressure, same as the Eagles did with Carr. They peppered him with pressure all night or all day long. Carl Grandison with one and a half sacks. Alante Taylor, another sack for the for the, the cornerback for the Saints. Brian Brisset, a uh, former Clemson product who I like a lot. Did a video on him the night he was drafted, saying he was my one of my favorite players in that entire draft class, and he's shown he's he's been showing why. You know, and it, it really irks my nerves in a very good way that one of my Falcons' main main competitors in our division has a player I like a lot, and, and he's actually playing well. And that's the bad thing about it. Brian Bessay, two sacks with two TFLs, so that's great on their end. Just don't perform well against us. You know, that's my only, that's my only wish for guys I like a lot that's not on my team. When you do play us, don't don't please don't play well. Uh, Mashawn Lattimore came back today, first game back from injury. Played fairly well. They didn't target him too much. You know, he is one of the best cornerbacks in the league when healthy, and they gave him that that, that respect by not targeting him, not targeting him um, that that much today. So that was uh, decent there to see. Uh, Tyran Matthew still can make plays at his veteran age. I believe he's like 32, 33 now, still making plays. Had a pick today. Uh, but the last pick of the day that closed the game out for the Saints came from safety, Reed, Blankenship, one pick. Uh, you know, and they, it, I, I didn't think it needs to be uh, reviewed, to be honest, but they did They did review it. Um, clearly, it was an interception, and that sealed the win for the Eagles. You know, and that and that really came from just pressure. That pick came from pressure. He was, uh, Carr was throwing to Rashid Shaheed. And pressure came down straight down the middle. I don't know which player. I'm pretty sure it was Jalen Carter. I don't re- remember exactly, um, you know, where it came from. But I'm sure it was, it, was, it was up the middle. And like I said, Carter, who we all know, you know, since his Georgia days, um, you know, he is a monster. He was he, he was supposed to be a top three pick for a reason. Didn't happen because of off-the-field issues that we all know about now, you know, and his attitude is still a little a little not likable for, some, for most people that's not Eagles fans. But on the field... When it's time to play, when it's time to get this money, he is there and he is he is dominant. He is dominant, man. And you know, uh, the funny thing is, one of my bigger videos ever on on my channel came from a Jalen Carter clip. You know, and I mentioned that this was prior to him being cleared of his uh, you know off the field issues that ended up happening uh, a couple years ago. But basically, I was saying that you know his stock could could fall you know and it it, it, did, it did obviously you know he wasn't a top three pick he was a top 10 pick but uh you know a lot of people a lot of eagles fans after he was drafted uh called me <laughs> called me crazy and all that stuff but they were lucky i was right kind of sort of that he didn't fall as much as i thought he, he, he would but he did fall because he should have been a top three pick and ended up going to number 10 to the eagles so you know they should be thanking me in, instead of uh you know acting wow how, how eagles fans do but Nonetheless, though, great win, great team win by the Eagles. Overcame some adversity, some self-inflicted adversity. But uh, as I said before, man, when I did my preseason picks for the Super Bowl, I did pick the Packers versus the Texans. But I did mention some some teams that could give the Packers a run for their money. And the Eagles definitely on that list. The Saints were not. The Saints were definitely not, but they definitely are now. You know, they are uh, 2-1, but they are definitely a, a a promising team. As I said before, I still don't trust Derek Carr long term. I, I truly don't. But if he can revert back to his old form of, you know, the Raiders form, I think what 2020, 2021, whatever year that was, where he was playing fairly well and, and took him to the playoffs, if he can give you that one more time, this Saints could go out on one more good good run 
you know, I still think at some point in time they have to break up this uh, team. You know, I don't know if Lattimore has to, has to go or Camaro on that big contract. We'll see. Like I said, I've been saying it for years now. They still held on to all these guys, but at some point they had to go younger and, uh, you know, um, and get some and shed some salary cap off. So this might be the last year for the Saints team, but we'll see. I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past, but uh, overall, great game. Definitely the best game of the one o'clock games. So we'll see what what four thirty brings us. And also, my uh, Falcons play the Chiefs tonight. Hopefully, a upset win. I think we're gonna win this game. You now I've been saying uh, since the schedules came out, my Falcons will uh, win. So I'll probably discuss that game in the video. Uh, as well after the game so stay tuned guys uh, all 22 highlights film that those come out tomorrow uh probably saints versus eagles then probably one or two more more games depending on what else happens but this is for the video guys like share comment subscribe i'll see you guys next time